few things uh, before we get started. Um, so uh, just to make sure that everyone can hear me, um, in your icon bar, uh, you should have a raise hand icon. Um, so if you can hear me now, um, can you click on that just to let me know? Um, just give people a minute to do that. Um, whilst I do that, um, I'm just going to type in the message box as well. So um, if you do have any problems with audio today at any point, um, first thing to try is uh, logging out and then logging back into the session. Um, that usually fixes uh, most problems there um, as well. Okay, I think most people have uh, raised hands, so I'm just gonna lower all of those. Um, Next thing to know is today's session is being recorded um, and I'll make it available um, along with the slides on the Pearson Music community pages um, in a couple of days time. Um, there's a link to um, the uh, music community pages at the end of these slides as well um, and uh, you can download the slides um, from the materials section um, in this session as well. Okay, so uh, let's uh, move on. Um, so hopefully um, uh, results have been sorted for everyone now and um, I hope that's all gone well. Um, but um, if uh, you've got any students, uh, any learners looking at resubmissions for any units um, that were internally assessed and received a, a centre assessment grade, um, we have said that learners will be granted an opportunity to resubmit those um, and that further guidance around that will be uh, released um, as soon as possible um, around that. Um, Moving on to start to think about uh, the delivery and assessment for 2021. Um, so at the moment, we still are working with Ofqual and DfE to confirm amendments that can and mitigations that can happen for BTEC um, in this next academic year. Um, and it's hoped that we can have some more news around that by mid-September. Um, that's the sort of date uh, that we're looking for there with getting everything confirmed um, and being able to release that information. Um, but there is saying that there is a clear intention uh, from Ofqual in the information that they've released um, around uh, what they would want from vocational and, and technical qualifications. Um, and that is uh, to not miss out any of the content of units or components um, and more specifically um, the mandatory uh, units and content as well um, and then also I mean part of the advice that we would give around that is to certainly focus um, with your cohort that would be completing uh, in summer 2021 uh, around completing uh, mandatory content and assessments first before uh, maybe some of the optional ones. Um, I know that that could cause some problems with um, your assessment plans or thinking about the synoptic uh, units as well. Um, and the other thing uh, that is coming from some of the off-qual um, information is that there's more of a focus on streamlining assessment um, and to look at combining assessment criteria as well. Um, and that's something that I will go into a little more detail on um, 
in a bit as well um, when we're looking at uh, some of the different things there. Um, so to look a bit more detail um, in terms of some of the specifications, um, I'll go through each one. Um, just thinking about how you might approach some of this stuff for next year and then we'll look more generally um, at the um, sort of uh, skills units and things that get covered in the music and music tech specs and how you can approach those as well. Um, so for the BTEC first, um, this is looking at the sort of streamlining of assessment a little more. Um, and the idea behind this is to look through the units um, that you are delivering um, and look to see where you can possibly uh, are almost uh, assessing the, the same sorts of things um, twice. So for example, um, certainly on the uh, nationals and uh, where you've got several performance units, um, you're obviously going to be assessing uh, performances on a few different occasions uh, in probably normal circumstances. Um, whereas what you could do is look at um, the criteria and design and develop an assessment that covers all of these um, in, in one assessment. And that can streamline your assessments um, to allow you more teaching and delivery time um, throughout the year as well. So first thing to look at really um, f uh, with the BTEC first is um, around combining unit two um, with another unit, um, depending on the optional units that you deliver. Um, obviously the popular ones that are usually around uh, to combine with unit two are probably either unit five performing or six uh, recording or maybe even um, sequencing in there as well. Um, that's because of the types of projects um, and products that um, centres usually do, which is either the performance or um, a, um, a CD of some sorts. Um, so those units lean towards uh, a combined sort of assessment for um, to go alongside unit two. Um, but obviously um, with unit two and a live performance in many centers, that's probably not possible to go ahead at the moment. Um, so we are saying with those sorts of things um, where it is a live event, um, it would be possible to move that to a virtual event. So using an online system uh, or pre-recorded performances maybe. Um, so doing an online uh, event on Zoom um, that should allow the planning to take place by online meetings if that becomes necessary as well um, and it's also possible to still invite an audience along to view that online event as well um, and then obviously with combining that with the um, assessment for performing um, you can cut down on the assessments around those units um, and assess the performing um, with the um, event that's being put on as well. So if your learners are performing in that event, um, you can assess their uh, performance skills with that as well. Um, obviously recording at the moment could be a little more problematic in terms of getting in studios. Um, and that's where um, individual centers We'll have to make decisions on this and look at things. Um, you'll all have your own approaches, um, but things to consider around that are the social distancing actually in the sessions. Is that possible in your space um, that, that you have? Um, and then also about the timing and, and of the sessions, um, because obviously equipment is going to be need to be cleaned or left for a suitable length of time between those sessions before the next use as well. Um, so those are a couple of ideas around the BTEC first of um, streamlining the assessment more um, and, and combining some of those units there. 
Um, moving on to have a quick look at the tech award. Um, obviously, the big impact um, here uh, for most centres has been around compo uh, component two, um, because that was probably one uh, that was not able to uh, have the centre assessment grade, but was still lost a significant amount of time uh, in the delivery or the assessment of that in your centre through the closures and was planned to probably finish sometime in this, this term here. Um, and that's a common theme with um, the tech award structure, not just in music, but for every sector. Um, so that is something that we are looking at with Ofqual and DFE and um, see what mitigations we can put in place. Um, and as I said, hopefully there'll be more news around that um, in the next couple of weeks um, there. But um, thinking about approaching it and if you are um, working on component two with your learners now, um, it is obviously uh, good to point out that it is focused on the individual and the skills that they uh, can demonstrate and develop. Um, so this can be assessed um, through evidence that's created inside and outside of the centre. Um, so it can be possible for uh, your learners to be working on things um, at home and making recordings. Um, so uh, that can include um, them if they're more performance based, um, uh, recording themselves on uh, their phone, as, um, or um, in terms of uh, recording, making recordings um, on Zoom or anything like that. Um, so they can build up their own evidence portfolio um, there to demonstrate their skills. Um, if they're more uh, composition based and developing those skills, um, that can be based around uh, some uh, little snippets of compositions that they can upload to upload to somewhere like SoundCloud or uh, a private YouTube channel as well. Um, and also if uh, they're working on production, uh, so working on door, they can um, obviously do um, screenshots um, as the, of the things they're doing or even better, um, they could do screen capture um, so they are recording their screen uh, whilst they're doing stuff. Obviously, that does require access to um, specialist equipment, um, but uh, there are obviously lots and lots of freeware um, software for uh, production now that can be downloaded onto tablets uh, and computers. Um, so that is a potential option as well to, to build evidence that way. And thinking about combining um, the delivery and the, and the teaching um, is when working on component two, um, making sure that the skills that they're working on are building towards the skills that they will be using in uh, component three and the assessment for that as well. So ensuring that um, they're probably covering performance and composition uh, or creation um, and uh, or production and, and creation because um, those are the two pathways in um, the component three assessment that students would choose to take. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, centres are in lots of different situations and taking lots of different approaches to social distancing and the arrangements within schools at the moment. Um, and things to consider, obviously, are the use of is the use of equipment and your access to this. Um, so, I know that some people are not going to be in specialist rooms at the moment or for a little while, and that might be something that's going to impact on your delivery of uh, the units and components that you're delivering. Um, but it's worth thinking about what you can do in that space as well. Um, if you're not in a specialist room, it might be necessary to keep things a little more theoretical um, at this point. Um, and 
uh, deliver the more theoretical t sides to the components um, to your learners there and then allow them to do some of the more practical work maybe outside of the centre uh, if that's possible. Um, if they're working on um, computers, uh, is it possible to have individual workstations um, that a learner does use every time, um, which can obviously cut down on uh, the cleaning uh, and uh, that's needed in centres. And then around uh, obviously shared instruments as well. Um, that's a, obviously a big thing within uh, music departments um, using the same equipment by several different people, um, allowing it to either um, be cleaned or left for an appropriate length of time uh, between uses as well. And you might need to plan sessions maybe with different groups um, of how you're going to approach that. Uh, one group may have a practical session uh, and you've got another group coming in where you need the same equipment. Um, it may need to go into some sort of rotor where you do a practical session with one group and then a more theoretical session with, with another group and rotate those um, throughout the weeks um, as an option as well. And then um, going on to the BTEC Nationals, um, obviously there's many more um, sort of optional units um, around in the different suites in the 2010 and the 2016-2018 uh, uh, suites of uh, the BTEC Nationals. Here um, it would certainly be advised for uh, completing learners to maybe look at um, the mandatory units that you're delivering. Um, and the teaching and learning content uh, and the assessment within those uh, units and then looking through the optional units uh, that you are planning to deliver and thinking about how to best match up those assessment criteria to cut down on the assignments and the number of assignments that you're delivering um, which can then allow you to focus more on delivery of those as well um, and creating some more project-based um, uh, units and assessments there. Um, the centre that I uh, used to uh, teach in, um, that was actually an approach we took some time ago um, with um, all of the units that we delivered. Um, we used to teach on the 2010 spec um, and that covered um, in, in performance, we used to cover uh, Unit 40, the ensemble unit, uh, Unit 23, um, the, uh, which was uh, uh, performance techniques, and also the practical uh, assessment criteria from Unit 30, um, the pop music in practice unit. Um, and we used to have just lessons called performing um, in the end. Um, and worked on uh, like a single assessment at a time um, that actually covered criteria from all three of those um, units as well. So it became a much bigger project that uh, the learners worked on over a, over a period of time. Um, so that is a, another option of how you could think about um, approaching the assessment this year as well, uh, which obviously then allowed much more teaching uh, time and working on rehearsals um, with those units as well. Um, and it's also recognised that um, maybe there are just some units that it is impossible to teach and deliver at the moment in your centre. Um, you may need to look at delaying the assessment of some of these until things maybe have changed and advice has uh, differed. Um, and just because of the social distancing, it's impossible to teach those um, at this time. Uh, so that's something that would need to be considered for your centre and the situation that, that you are in, um, because obviously every centre is taking their own approach and to the guidelines uh, from government as well. 
and um, that can obviously uh, impact on what you can do as well. Um, so before I move on uh, to looking at the um, sort of uh, themes of the, the units that get covered and going into a little more detail around um, how you can approach things, um, just pause for any questions. So if you've got any questions at this point, um, please use the um, chat box um, and I'm happy to answer anything there. Okay, it doesn't look like um, anything's, uh, oh, uh, so I've got one question come in. Um, will BTEC release some safeguarding guidelines around online events? Um, I think some of the safeguarding things and guidelines for around online events um, will be more for centres to manage and have their own guidelines because every centre will, will probably have their own um, way of approaching that as well. Um, like some centres will allow certain platforms, some won't. Um, so we're not going to, I think, release any particular guidelines around those, but we are planning um, a guidance document um, that is uh, planned to come out this week, um, and that covers all of um, the different specifications in uh, looking at units as well and and ways to approach those um, so that they are planned to be released um, this week um, and hopefully uh, maybe today as well um, so I'm just waiting on uh, seeing when those will go online um, but in terms of uh, safeguarding um, online events um, is uh, possible depending on the platform you use to just invite a, a specific audience um, or use a private uh, YouTube channel or something like that um, where you can uh, present your event and, and restrict the access to this sort of material as well. Um, so I think it depends on again on the platform that you're using um, and what your uh, center's approach to things like that is as well um, but uh, yeah moving on to the sort of events and products type units so the management and delivery of those um, obviously we said um, about it being more of a virtual online event rather than a, a specific live event with an audience. Um, looked at the planning and development stages of the process um, that, if necessary, um, could be online meetings. Um, and online meetings could be a great way to approach that as well, um, as um, it can obviously allow you to record um, those meetings. Um, and uh, see who's uh, speaking and, and contributing to those meetings as well. Um, Zoom webinar um, as a platform is as, uh, a bit more sophisticated than the Zoom meetings and allows you to uh, better present the um, content there as well. So that could be an option to use. Um, and uh, as it says there, it can. Uh, sort of has the facility to charge an ent entrance fee um, and then you've got a clear distinction between uh, what's known as the panelists and attendees there as well. Um, mentions about radio broadcasts and podcasts as well um, uh, which uh, are allowed in any normal assessment years as well for a lot of things, a lot of the units that cover the events uh, side of things as well. Um, so using uh, Mixcloud or something like that for those. Um, and with these events, obviously, 
um, it's still the full experience of, of the planning and budgeting side can be taken into account and you can still cover those. Um, and um, the learners are still going through that process of the planning and developing the product um, and uh, even for the recording sort of uh, the CD sort of based products as well um, can still go through those and schedule the time um, uh, for when they uh, uh, are doing the recordings as well depending on what's available in your centre. Um, so that's I think the one of the biggest things with the event thing is to consider how you deliver that um, and um, I mean certainly our suggestion for now is uh, to move that to more of an online thing rather than a uh, a live event um, with that. Um, and uh, just going through a list of units there um, that uh, this uh, would impact on. Um, so hopefully that's useful and you can identify units where um, you can uh, sort of consider that and, and put that into practice. Um, so performing. Um, Obviously, the biggest concern around this is uh, probably ensemble performance. Um, now, in some centres, this may not be possible. Um, in others, it might be uh, possible to do some smaller groups. Um, it may end up that um, you have groups, quite small groups of maybe just three. Um, in a lot of units, um, ensemble can be approached by just working in pairs as well. Um, so that might uh, be a way of, of approaching the ensemble uh, performance in, a, in your centre. Um, obviously, for the mandatory external assessment on the BTEC National um, in music performance, there is the requirement um, for it to be um, at least three musicians um, in the ensemble for that um, and um, that's where that requirement needs to stay um, I don't think we are able to change that um, but we are looking at some other ways to approach that unit um, to um, allow centres uh, to uh, access that task um, when it becomes available in the new year as well. Um, obviously with the smaller groups um, and the musicians that you have available it might lead to some uh, more unconventional band setups um, but um, saying that that might then lead to instead of doing straight cover versions which um, in a lot of the assessments um, isn't uh, sort of aim of it as well um, they may need to work on rearranging it um, for the uh, ensemble that they do have and the instruments that they have there as well um, good tip around that is obviously looking at some of the sort of more stripped back uh, BBC uh, Radio 1 live lounge type performances um, uh, where it's a much more stripped back acoustic version. Um, obviously, lots of these uh, versions are on, on YouTube as well. Um, and uh, uh, to look at ways of approaching that. And obviously, um, incorporating uh, available technology into the ensemble work, so backing tracks, um, loop pedals, etc., cetera, um, could be used as well um, in some of these uh, performances. Um, so rehearsal sessions um, featuring group work, um, obviously that may become more difficult um, to record as well depending on your space and, and accessing to that, um, if at all possible um, you can still video those, um, if not it could be worth um, having students uh, access to equipment that they can record these on. Um, all of this can be uploaded to um, a VLE or a private YouTube channel um, and that can allow other learners to comment on each other's work as well. Um, and 
for you to um, give feedback as well to some extent. Um, obviously, solo work, um, much more feasible, um, but as it says there, it shouldn't be assumed that all learners can work on this from home. Um, and um, obviously, in the centre, um, again, doing solo work, um, it might need to be considered about um, certain equipment, sharing of equipment and instruments, um, depending on uh, the instruments performed and how you manage those sessions uh, with your learners as well. Um, but again, it's certainly be encouraged to um, film a lot of the rehearsals around this um, and uh, upload it to VLEs or private YouTube channels um, and things like that for peer review as well. Um, again, going back to the sort of events type thing um, about performances taking place in front of an audience. Um, as we know, that's probably not going to happen in the near future. Um, so they could take place in classrooms um, and then be recorded and made available um, online as well. And also, um, you know, using online platforms where you can invite audiences in as well. Um, so very similar advice around um, the um, live event side of things there as well. Um, obviously, there is the government guidance for the full opening of schools. Um, and that set out some aspects um, of around performance and rehearsals. Um, so uh, there's obviously, you know, the uh, the additional risk uh, of infection uh, environments where there's singing, chanting, playing wind and brass or shouting, um, and then around the group sizes uh, for these sorts of things as well. Um, obviously, that's a changing uh, document uh, and advice, so it's always uh, good to keep uh, checking that for any updates uh, that the government have. And although not linked on here, there is um, government advice um, for working in the performing arts sector um, that does have some further guidance around some playing of instruments uh, that could be quite interesting to look at. Um, uh, and uh, that's under section four of that uh, advice there, I think. Um, and, and so that's quite a useful guidance document as well. Um, so if you just search for um, government working in performing arts, um, it should come up um, with that sort of uh, document as well, um, which goes into a little more detail around playing of instruments. And uh, again, there's a list of uh, units that, um, that might be affected by some of this guidance here as well. Um, composing, um, obviously much more of an individual task and, and potentially um, uh, can be done uh, quite easily uh, by, by learners. However, it is more about the access to equipment and um, the workstations within centres as well. Um, obviously, um, it might be possible for you to access your equipment there, um, or it may be that you don't have access to the specialist equipment and could potentially approach it in some different ways. Um, there's, again, for composing and, and arranging tasks uh, on smartphones and, and tablets, there's some quite good uh, freeware or paid for resources these days um, that uh, could be used. Um, but um, if you're working in a centre as well, um, it would be uh, best to work on probably a, a, a door um, to sequence uh, and work on composition in that way. Um, it can generally allow a slightly faster way of working um, so uh, learners can access their work and continue with that um, where they left off as well. Um, also thinking about um, that 
art and, and composing and uh, the safe using of the same workstations. Uh, you might want to consider um, the, the keyboard that's being used, um, uh, the actual computer keyboard, um, and uh, it might be worth investing in um, the plastic uh, skins that go over keyboards that have the specialist keys and shortcuts uh, for certain programs, um, because then obviously these can be easily cleaned um, compared to a computer keyboard. Um, so that could be an option to, to help in the cleaning um, of your equipment as well. Um, and then um, thinking about the sharing of this uh, and uh, composition work um, using things like SoundCloud, um, could be a good way to upload some of these ideas um, because then it allows uh, comments to be input at specific points um, to get feedback and, and comment on um, and allows you to share it with you know your peers and and your uh, teacher in there as well so that's a way that learners could share their work there um, and again there's a list of um, and a link to a range of resources to help with uh, composing work. Um, and um, it could be possible to um, move work from center to home, depending on um, the platforms that are being used. But obviously, when doing that, um, it's worth thinking about versioning of the saved work um, so it's clear which is the latest version and what they're working on at that particular time as well. So again, um, just going through the list of um, units that might be affected there and uh, depending on the courses that you're delivering as well. Uh, so sequencing um, has some very similar guidance and and suggestions uh, to composing. Obviously, lots of the same software can be used for sequencing and composing. Um, as it says there, again, many students, but not all, will be able to partly work from home on this, um, but that will depend on, again, access to equipment and what they have. Um, there's a link there to some of the free music production software that is available um, that uh, learners could access and, and use at home. Um, and uh, as we said about moving equipment between the centre and, and home, depending on the um, platforms that they are using, uh, it says about uh, sort of uh, compa compatibility issues there. Um, and it might be worth uh, saving work down as a MIDI file um, if they're using purely MIDI stuff um, to move things around because um, that can easily be imported uh, between the different software. Um, but if using audio, um, it might be necessary to um, individually uh, bounce down audio tracks um, to then be imported into the other program uh, when uh, they are working on that platform. Um, and as again, it says about version control there, um, just to uh, ensure the progress is tracked, but also just so it's clear uh, which version they should be working on at a particular time as well. Um, so there are some uh, good examples of tutorials for doors as well um, that you could use in your teaching um, to help learners uh, get uh, up to speed on using uh, those skills quickly. Um, and there's a link there to, to an example of that. Um, <clears throat> Sound on Sound magazine um, is a, a good resource as well that has um, tips on all the main doors um, and on each month. Um, and that has some really good articles in there as well for working on stuff. Um, so that could be a really good resource to access as well. Um, 
and in some of the units um, it is a requirement to set up equipment um, in some of the sequencing units um, and it might be possible and and you might want to think about it of having a setup in an adjacent studio um, which is the the setup uh, sort of um, equipment which can be cleaned between uses um, and then that can be used to show how to do that or um, learners can uh, show how the home setup works and talk through that um, and talk about the differences uh, between school and college um, depending on uh, the, the situation and what equipment uh, learners have as well. And again, there's a list of um, units that are um, affected in that way. Um, going into recording, again, quite similar to composing and sequencing because of the software that's being used. Um, again, much more uh, can be more individually based um, for a lot of the work. But obviously, the big concern around this is the use of a main recording studio. Um, and in some centres, as we say, it, that just may not be possible um, at this point, and it, or only a small number of, of uh, learners can use that at any one time. Um, obviously, it might be necessary to uh, go down the route of uh, video tutorials or something like that to demonstrate the use of equipment in studios. Um, rather than the more hands-on practical demonstrations that you may probably do in your studios um, in a normal sort of situation. Um, it might be possible to work in small groups or pairs um, to demonstrate some of this as well um, in studios. Um, and um, it might be that you could stagger sessions um, so that learners are arriving at different times um, to do work in main studios as well. Um, so it really does depend on your centre and how you're approaching that. Um, hopefully as well um, you have um, the resource of your main studio and a separate space uh, for computer suite which runs similar software. Um, and that's hopefully where, you know, once you've got the re material recorded, that can be transferred to individual workstations uh, where learners can work on that on a particular machine and allow the use of the main studio space uh, to be used by someone else for the recording as well. Um, as you said, um, Obviously, the, the main risk here is probably around uh, cleaning equipment um, and mixing desks are the, the obvious uh, big issue here, as well as microphones. Um, lots of uh, faders, button potentiometers on these, um, and it probably isn't possible or good for the equipment to uh, clean all of this stuff. Um, as it, it may degrade the equipment as well. Um, so that's where it might be necessary to manage the time more um, in space uh, to allow the use by different groups. Um, some desks, digital desks, um, allow a remote sort of uh, use by apps on an iPad or something similar. Um, and obviously, uh, an iPad is a lot easier to clean than a mixing desk. Um, so if you have that res resource available, that could be an option as well there. Um, but the main thing about recording um, is probably thinking about the amount of time that it's going to need uh, between sessions. Um, there's a list here as some ideas of uh, the types of tutorial videos that, that could be done. Um, to help learners get to grips with some of the skills um, of uh, setting up and recording um, 
different instruments as well. So um, there are lots of tutorial videos already available on YouTube and things like that uh, that could be accessed for some of these things as well. Or you could create your own or have uh, learners create some stuff depending on, again, the use of equipment and the access that you have. And then finally, again, uh, the list of units that could uh, be affected here as well. Um, then moving on to live sound, um, obviously lots of similar considerations about this um, as um, uh, the sort of access to recording studios because of the mixing desks. Um, and again, think about it could be possible to have um, tutorial videos um, in place uh, to help with the, the demonstration and, and talking about the skills um, with live sound rather than actual practical demonstrations and setting up in that way. Um, and then uh, the option of splitting the classes as well into short sessions, um, depending on, again, the access that you have to res resources. Um, again, a list of the potential sort of videos uh, that could be done as tutorials to help with uh, live sound there. Um, and then um, thinking about it in more of a theoretical way, um, you might want to do that and then have like small groups or pairs um, go and set up equipment. Uh, but again, it's going to be around the, the time and leaving things for a specific length of time and safely doing that um, when you actually um, uh, come to the practical work of that. Um, and when it comes to an assessment of a live event and there are students actually practically working on things there, um, it, as we say, it may not be possible to have a live audience. It may need to be a separate uh, thing where they do set up the equipment and then the live event is and the actual event is a separate thing that is carried out at a different time to allow this to be done safely as well. Um, again, a list of the units where this would be affected as well. And then finally, uh, thinking about uh, music theory and listening, hopefully most of this can continue as normal. Um, depending on the spaces that you're that you're in. Hopefully um, you, know, you are all in a space where you're able to play music to, to your learners um, and uh, be able to teach the more theoretical side of things. Um, and again, there's lots of resources around the delivery of music theory and listening um, available in you know, online and, and on websites uh, there um, and in apps as well now as well. Um, and where uh, we're talking about learners demonstrating listening skills and oral skills, um, that obviously can be done on a more individual basis. Um, you could take that off to a practice room um, or uh, somewhere else um, to for them to actually practice going through that and, and go through that with you, um, depending on the spaces that you have available. Um, and as you said before, it could be that learners are using their own phones uh, to record um, the, them actually demonstrating things um, and then uploading that to um, a website, private YouTube channel um, or somewhere like that as well. Um, again, uh, uh, some useful resources um, that you might uh, want to use um, in the listening and, and theory sort of based stuff and uh, uh, the units that this would uh, likely affect as well. So this point um, really um, it's open up to questions that you may have. Um, as I said, um, we will have much more news over the next couple of weeks um, around what can happen with BTEX um, and the mitigations that are 
coming and, and being put in place there. Um, but hopefully this has given you some ideas of approaching the units that you're delivering um, and, and ways to approach the delivery and the assessment um, in uh, your centre um, depending on your individual circumstances as well. Um, so uh, if you do have any questions now, please use the chat box. Um, I'm happy to go through any of these. Uh, will standardisation uh, material be available on the website soon? Um, if you just bear with me one minute. Um, I know that that has been delayed at the moment. Um, I'm just seeing if I can uh, see when that was possibly going to appear. Um, I'm just looking back at some previous messages. See if I can see a date in there. So just bear with me one minute. So there's no date set yet for when uh, standardization material will go live on the website. Um, but um, hopefully with the changes and, and the news that will come out over the next couple of weeks, um, we'll have more news on that um, very soon as well. Um, so yeah, it's at the moment it is a bit of a a hold tight with the lead IV registration and standardization material, um, but we will make it available as soon as possible. Um, so just see if there's any further questions come in around this. Okay. Doesn't seem to be any particularly coming in. Um, so just on this page here, um, there's a link to uh, my Twitter. Um, there's also a link through to the uh, customer service portal where you can submit um, any questions via, uh, for email or live chat. Um, there's a sign up form there um, for my updates um, that I do. Um, on a monthly basis um, and they go online as well. And uh, there's also a link there to the Pearson Music community page where this recording and uh, the slides will get posted up as well. Um, so uh, are our submitted component one grades for current year 11s being honored? Uh, so um, I'm presuming that's tech award um, so if you submitted a centre assessment grade um, for uh, any units um, or components, um, that should be uh, the centre assessment grade now um, for, for your learners. Um, so um, very few centre assessment grades for the internally assessed uh, units uh, were moved anyway. Um, but in terms of uh, that, um, that's the, the process now. And then the, the change in how external uh, units uh, were calculated as well has uh, taken place. So uh, the results that you now see um, on edX Online uh, should be the most up-to-date ones for your center. Okay, um, so if there are um, no more questions coming in, um, just uh, like to say uh, thank you very much for attending. I hope you found it useful um, and uh, I hope you all have a good day.